Welcome back to the Raise Up Podcast. I'm Athena. I'm Charlie. And as you can hear, my voice is a little different today, so we're just going to roll with this raspy. I almost sleeping with a different person. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brett. Honey, will you give me some water? What? <laughs> Who was in my bed? Yeah, I lost my voice last weekend and it's slowly dragging on. You would think that was back. a blessing, but it's not. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. So, well, uh, for those of you that are new to the Raise Up podcast, uh, you can find us on raiseupmindset.com where all of our podcasts are listed there. Facebook, we, Instagram. Yeah. Uh, we can take questions also from our form there, so um, absolutely shoot us any questions you have. We're here talking about life and business as a married couple, as leaders, as what What else? All Owners. Of Owners, <laughs> yes. You know, um, different world that sometimes we live in. You know, we have 270 souls that we get to help foster and help uh, raise up and do different things for. So it's always a, uh, a different adventure every day. <laughs> every single day. You uh, definitely, I am Norm some days on the bar stool, uh, be able to, to uh, it take in all the energy that people have. And then, you know, sometimes we're able to give that energy back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so. Go ahead, Athena, what do we got? Oh, okay, well. Part of a, a really important facet of our business is the culture that we continue to cultivate over time. And the culture centered around our core values, which spell raise up. And what, what occurred to me is that a big part of how that culture is developed is how we're creating safety amongst the workplace. Yeah, the employees. I, it's a... Uh... You have to feel safe in your workplace. You have to feel safe to come to work. It has to be a safe environment. Um, and it has to be a fun environment too. I mean, it just can't be all about work because it doesn't make it fun. And when it's not fun, sometimes people deem that unsafe. Some people feel it that say, we, we don't want it to be a job. We want it to be an adventure. We want to people to have fun here and have a good time. So um, I really believe that the safety part of it is you can be all walks of life. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and uh, we respect all of that. So it's, it's, uh, we have definitely seen some people that have come in, um, that has been into a workplace or it's been into a home or it's been somewhere else that they felt very timid and they were very gun shy, I would say. I mean, yeah. uh, they were just very, when they come into place or, you know, they put their head down, they don't, they, they don't look like they had a lot of joy in their life. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And I think it really, it demonstrates from their, they don't connect as freely as some of the other team members would. And it's not everybody that comes here, but there are certainly more reserved people than others. And the reservation is usually more than just, I just like to be by myself. Yeah, I mean, there's usually some kind of backstory to that. Um, and trying to get people to blossom like a flower is sometimes a little bit of work. Yeah. Um, and we put that work into it because we want them to blossom here. We want our team members <clears throat> and our work family to be part of that family. And it's sometimes um, they've never been around that environment before. So they don't know what to trust. They don't know what to see. They don't know how it's going to be. They don't be. know how to act. Yeah. And so sometimes there's a lot of coaching involved. And we have some people um, that definitely have uh, some more work that we do with than some others and some come here just pretty joyful and everything like that and they really raise that level of energy here and uh, the people that don't they're just kind of at that negative energy they're just not they're not drawing from you they're not they're not supporting they're it. neutral yeah neutral excuse me sorry that was a better word more neutral they're just like hey i'm here and everybody i'm working you know you don't have to bug me and we, we really want to drive a different uh, culture into those people and, and really help help let them know that uh, they're important, that they're a part of our team, and if they have some problems or things are going on, they can come and talk to us and we can help them. And They're not alone in this, yeah. this like place of life. And I think we've all been in a place of life sometimes where um, things seemed a little dark or they seemed a little bit tough, 
and uh, there's been a lot of people who have come alongside us as we have done it and as our journey you know I mean this is gonna be our 25th year of being in business with BAC and that doesn't count the other businesses that we had before that CNG service ASAP all the other yeah. things that we did before um, so I can tell you there's been some great mentors that have come alongside me that have talked to me all, all the way from my commercial fish out of 87 some of those people were just amazing um, that they walked alongside of me and it's you know it's for somebody to walk alongside somebody else usually they've kind of gone down that journey somewhere too um, maybe it's not the same journey but it's a journey you know mm -hmm. and I, I really look at that and say that we could probably help this person we could probably get them out of their clamshell and let them know that there is light outside you know yeah and you know I've always looked at it from this vantage point that when you're in survival mode you there isn't any room for creativity and optimization you're just pushing through you're white knuckling you're literally you're stopping and grabbing a hot dog at the gas station in between whatever and it there's no super intentional thought around what you're doing except for i just got to get through this and so what what we're offering here is this idea of when you create this sense of safety, like I don't need to be worried about losing my job. I don't need to be worried about layoffs. I don't need to f have this like threatening tone around what, what's what got to get done at work. It's more of this, I can be free to like feel safe and then start to branch off into these other spaces of trusting. And then that's when the growth happens that's when it starts to supercharge. That's when you start to see people getting into their flow. And it's this bigger space of just trying to get a higher level of productivity from people. It's assisting them in their own journey to see what you see in them. And then usually you see that higher productivity come through it when they are more comfortable and they feel yeah. like they can be in their own also. And I, you know, I, I've, in several podcasts, I've talked about it before in um, COVID, we really saw that a lot of people and we saw it I think a little bit more than we ever did because so many people were worried about their jobs and what they were doing mm, yeah. that I think a lot of people felt that they might have lost their job people had bought houses cars they had family members and things like that so I, I really believe that we had a lot more people at that time were a little bit more in fear um, and not because they had a tick or anything like that just because the whole towns were shutting down and, and you and I had not fear, but we definitely had some awareness of where we needed to be and what we needed to do. And we really had to reshuffle the deck for ourselves to figure out how are we going to surprise this? Because at that time, I think we had 180, 190 employees yeah. and um, we had a lot of people saying, hey, boss, what are we going to do? Hey, what are, what's our plan? And like, you know, we're going to take 24, 48 hours and figure this out because everything is coming so new. So I, I, that's one of the biggest times I thought we saw a bigger group have a little bit more of like fear a little bit more of not knowing what it was going to look like for them and their families and uh, you and I really had to pull it together to make sure that we were solid so we had a great um, united front yeah to bring to them so they didn't feel nervous like they felt like okay I'm good and I tell you that we had some of the most appreciated employees at that time that were just so thankful because there was so many people were getting laid off or they were being terminated or they the companies were going belly up and we really dived into it and I, I, I just that is one of the biggest ones I think I've seen within our career of our company of like there was hundreds of hundred plus people that were really pretty nervous and and you know um, we have a lot of secondary people that work for us and when I say secondary they have a first job but they might work for us on the weekends or they might work for us there yeah. and they were losing their first job so all of a sudden we became their full-time job and so we're like okay well how do we embrace this and then we got into a place that we were hiring a bunch of people because we had so much work we're like holy and now yeah, like, the contracts were coming in yeah and they're like how are you guys getting work and nobody else is I'm like okay well we came out of our shell we came out of our own to rewrite the story and I think that's one of the things we talked about it's like we wrote the strip we could have been in victim mode we could have been like okay we're just gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna hold everything we have and lay everybody off but we chose to be in a different place and I think that's what we try to choose for some of our employees um, is that we want them to feel safe in the environment and that was one of the ones I thought we could really show and talk about um, is because we made it safe for them. We made yeah. it very good for them. They made it like nobody was losing their homes, nobody was losing their cars, paychecks were still rolling in, and they actually were getting a little bit more overtime. And that really, um, 
I know it hurt a lot of companies and we, you know, we were friends with a lot of the people coaching them through a lot of different things and stuff too, but it really let us be there for a lot of people that didn't have somebody that we could be the positive light for them. We could let them know that the, the skull, the sky was not falling. You know, it, I think probably that example was so amazing how once we decided that we were holding space in, in this decision around the team that their perspective shifted from fear to gratitude. Oh, huh. And then once it shifted from, from, from into gratitude, it was like this just like radiating energy of positivity and happiness. Like I have never felt as much like people just so happy and grateful. And just we were like swimming in it for months and months and months. It was just so year, year wonderful. I mean, there was really, I mean, knowing that we were so busy and everything was going so well and they were, and then they asked people, how are you guys staying busy? What's going on in your company? What are you guys doing differently there? But we really had to gear up. We had to buy the special equipment for people. We had to put the partitions in. We had to put the barriers in. We had to get the cleaning materials. We had to get the, yeah. the ozone machine. I mean, we really... We were figuring it out. Like, and, how can we make it as safe as possible now for the customer and and the employee? And it was really good. The city came together. The state came together. The state came to our offices to explain kind of what was going on. We had people from the fire department that were helping us, giving us access of how they were getting pappers and all the other stuff. We want to make sure our team was safe. And it was a huge investment. But it was, it was one of the biggest investments and the biggest payoffs and in investments. And I wouldn't just say that in a monetary way. It was more of a payoff of our loyal employees. I mean, we still have, I was just seeing Paul the other day, eight years, how many days he's been yeah, with he's us. Yeah, he's almost here over nine years. Yeah, and so, you know, you just look at that and the gratitude they were and, and the employees and, and still, a lot of them still the same. I mean, they're just, uh, they're... They're good. They're, they, they like working here. That's safe. They know that they can come talk to us. They know that we have layers of management that they come and talk to, but they know my door's open. They know your door's open. I mean, they crash it all the time. <laughs> when so I'm we, here. Yeah. So we, we just, um, I guess it, just getting back to the bullet point on this is just the safety for them. Um, they know our campus is safe. We keep it secured. We know the building's safe. All those safety things, you know, and I'm a big safety person, EMS, fire, all that other stuff. But the security for our building, how much we invested into it. I mean, I can't even tell you how many people are like, these locks were pain in the butt, but I'm so glad we have them because of course our homeless population and theft and everything else is so more, you know, and I remember talking to you about this and you're like, how much money do you want to spend on this I stuff? Know, I, was like, I was like, I was like, honey, we're finally buying our own building. This is going to be ours. This is not thing we're retroing um, our buildings from renting from other people. We're just putting combo locks in the front door. I want this place to be a fortress in a place that we can keep anybody in or out as we choose. We can, and I shouldn't say keep anybody in, we can keep everybody that's inside safe and there. So we have secure floors, like our EMS floors completely secure differently than the other floors because only EMS and managers can get in there. We have areas that only certain people can get in there and our son Orion was excellent at putting this all together. Uh, he had this plan and all we just saw his dollar signs. He just signs. likes to spend our money. He does, he does. But he spent it in a good way this way. Uh, the camera system we put in, paving, the fences, the electric, uh, the electric uh, gates that open and out, nobody has to get out. I mean, it was just all intentionality yeah. for and our team. For those of you who are trying to get a, an idea of what we're talking about here is it's safety goes beyond just making sure that you've got um, no tripping hazards. It's like taking it to another level. Uh, what are you investing in the facts that your employees feel safe at your place or, or they're, they're feeling a little uneasy? And it's more than just, Charlie takes it to another level. He installed magnetic locking systems that um, RFID people, readers, yeah, yep, I mean, all the yep. different things so we could do it. But you know, I mean, when you look at that, it has been a great investment. I mean, we've even had some people that have breached when they came in, like when we used to leave the port door open from nine to five, but it would magnetic lock at 530. And then yeah. we had a lady that made herself at home and came into the second floor and started to eat one of our manager's food and then started loading up things. And everybody's looking online like, what the heck? Who's in Sarah's office? And we were immediately, our team called the police we had our medics or detailers. Everybody came up here, contained her. We had three police cars within seven minutes and we escorted the person out. Then, you know, it gave us another layer of like, 
we know that we're okay here. There was enough people to take care of it and do that. So our door is now locked. always locked and you have a doorbell in the front and it rings all the management system and lets us know. And we can yeah. talk to the person out front and just those levels of different security that we provide, <clears throat> not just in- uh, It feeds into that overall feeling I'm safe. Yeah, and you know, and having dispatchers here late at night time and, and drivers coming back and forth, we wanted to have that level of security for there. Uh, it was it was really important for us. And so now we don't have anybody, it feels a little bit awkward. I mean, I remember at 100th, it was a little bit of a different system and it was super dark over there. We have this place so bright. Well, 100th, we ended up changing all the lights out too, but yeah. it just gave it such a, a good, safe environment and everybody knows where everybody's at. They have camera systems in there and, they know that everybody is here for each other too. They know the management system's here. They know that the medics are up here. They're up there 24 hours a day. If they had a problem, they could call up to the medic room and they would come down. I mean, it really gives them a sense of security. And even safety factors, if you look at <clears throat> here, like we've had a couple on the job or injuries or hurts here and knowing that we have paramedics and EMTs upstairs, we yeah. have a full-blown ambulance in the ambulance that, bay. That was a retooling in like our policies because mm. it's like they don't always remember that, hey, there's paramedics on duty and they're, they're upstairs waiting for a call. And so, yeah, we had to really intentionally go through our processes and go, okay, before we, we administer first aid from the manager standpoint, call the paramedic and yeah. come have them take a look. Call the EMTs, paramedics, see, yeah. that they're trained for. They like doing it too. I mean, not everybody's going to have their own paramedics, but the point we're making here is that has there, um, is it time for you to sit down in your organization and talk about what are the bullet points that we can identify that people feel safe when they come here? Because when people truly start to feel safe, then they start to open and they become of this, they be like Charlie mentioned, they bloom into this person that connects into the team in a powerful way. And all of these talents start flying out. And, and it's amazing. It's amazing when you see people open. You know, um, we have employed some people uh, and employing some people with special needs and some other people that have helped us with DGMs and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting when you spend some time with them and you have some deliberate time with them, how they really, it, it, it means uh, something that the owner comes by and talks to them or pats them on the back or talks to them. And when you're saying you can get somebody to come out, the safe environment that we provide for him or her or anybody else. And um, I, I'll never forget, I'm gonna share the story, uh, talking to the mother, the grandmother of the, one of the people that are working for us. And uh, she was getting custody of the, uh, her grandson and when she told him that he had an interview with BAC, he says, that's a great organization, that's awesome. He was super enthusiastic because they were entrusting her, and she's a well-qualified lady, yeah. and uh, entrusting her with the grandson and knowing that he was uh, getting a job, and he's not a, a, a teenager, he's a little bit older, mm -hmm. but just knowing that he had a safe spot to be into, that was that was I part of that interview when I was inside that. I, I really took that to heart because like we are entrusted to take care of this person and he's he can take care of himself, but he feels so safe in this environment that he can kind of be in his own. So that, I thought that was pretty cool too. Yeah, so. yeah. and it's a reassurance to, to his caregivers that it's yes. like, hey, we're coming from a place where safety is important. Yes. And it really, at the end of it, this isn't my job, this isn't Charlie's job, this is our lifestyle. This is how we choose to show up in the world everywhere we go it's not a question of um how i ha who do i have to be at work who do i have to be when i'm at home with my kids it's like we also that safe environment that we tr we create here that the team members adopt they take it home to them and then it's like this bigger picture of it doesn't have to be hard well, even to the point that they bring their family members and their other members because they Yeah, they invite so their people to come yeah. work. <laughs> so we have a lot of nepotism in this company. And when I say nepotism, it's just not our family at work here. It's our employees' families and their families yeah. and their family members. And we get recommended to it. So when you know that you have a safe environment is when um, the junior decides to bring his, his wife over here where she worked for Anchor Rides. And yeah. if you have him, they brought their son, they brought their daughters, they, they were DGMs, they worked over at the as ambassadors at the airport. Like we've had some family trees here that we can really like from the time they started until they have moved on to sometimes some other career positions they wanted to go. Yeah. But we always welcome that, you know. We have a couple of EMTs and paramedics who are applying for Wasilla uh, as uh, full-time 911 operators. 
And I think they were a little nervous and tell me, I'm like, I'm proud of you guys. That's awesome. I know that you guys came here and that was your goal to get there. And I am, I'm, I feel pretty happy that we helped you get to that place. Yeah. And, you know, um, Mike used to be a, an employee of ours, you know, Chief Crotty, and uh, he's over there now. And it's neat to be able to talk to him. And he would let people know saying, hey, we got positions coming up. And he's like, hey, Charlie, do you have anybody that's really great? I'm like, yeah, we have some people that would be awesome in that. And he's like, well, tell them to apply, you know, because they're building their community and their structure over there. So how, what a great, if we could be a pipeline to help with AFD or uh, Juno Fire Department or Wasilla Fire Department to be able to pipeline paramedics and EMTs here. That gives them the safety of knowing that they can come to us and say, hey, boss, love working here, but I got this great opportunity. Go for it, 100%. Yeah. And if you guys still need some part-time work, we can use you on the weekends or the other days you're not working, you know? Right. Or if you have some people that are there that are firefighters that are trying to get up in the EMS world, let them know. So we get this pipeline of people coming through it because they know it's a safe environment. And they know they can learn here. Yes. And you know, what I love about what you just said is that it kinda, you don't have this mindset of Oh, I can't believe you're quitting us. I can't believe this is happening. I used like, to a long time ago. <laughs> I used but, to have a different mindset. But mm -hmm. do you, t so talk about that a little bit because there's some people out there that are like, man, I can't believe you're screwing me. You're like leaving me at a bad time. And you know, you, I love the phrase you always say, you, you can't sell tickets to, to people who don't want to go to the game. Exactly. So when you're saying that, if somebody is really, um, some positions we have here, career positions, some people will be here for a long time and we appreciate all those people and the longevity that we have with them. But sometimes we are, and I don't wanna say a stepping stone, we are a starting point. Let me say it that mm -hmm. way. We are a starting point for some people's careers. So when you become, I'll, I'll use EMS as one, when you become an EMT, it's hard to get an EMT job because you've just got through 180 hours of classes, but you have zero time with patients or doctors no or things experience. like that. So you have practical experience, but you don't have uh, patient experience. You don't have real life experience. So sometimes we will take on some of those guys to do it and, and proctor another person and, and learn it. Or we get a paramedic that's been an EMT for, but now he's got paramedic skills, which is a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. And now they need to get proctored. Patient contacts are important from all these things. So they can start off at the PAS, a private ambulance service, and they can get a lot of patient contacts where if they were down at say like Girdwood or Chugiak, may average two or three calls a day we can average, like yesterday, I think we got 12 or 14 calls yesterday between two ambulances. So how much time do they get with patient contacts? All the life flights that come in, critical care patients that we're helping assist with our partners like Life Med and Guardian. So how awesome is that for them to see this stuff and see how everybody's operating and really put their skills to a test? Well, I see how it benefits the team member, but what, what happened for you where it was like, you went from this perspective of oh, it was about you well, and because... what, what it was happening to you instead of like what's happening in the bigger picture. Well, I think that was me being more narrow-minded about it. I mean, I was worried about, I was so worried about what I was holding on to that I couldn't see past that. I couldn't see that other people had other careers and ambitions like and I did and yeah. dreams. So I, I had to literally, I had to readjust myself and say, okay, well, I had dreams and I'm living some of my dreams now. So why am I not trying to uh, help them live their dreams? And, I, and as you look at as our raise up and everything that we're GOAT and everything that we're a part of is, is some of the things that we are trying to do is make them up to their goals. And then once we rephrase that and we re, I guess, embraced it, let me put it that way, re-embraced it, it made it so much easier. It was a total different mindset. It was a mindset of like, thank you for the time I had with you. Thank yeah. you for everything you gave to us. And the contribution that you made. And good luck. And then when you leave it on that, everybody's like, I have the best job in the world. I, uh, the people I work for were amazing. They were good. They, they welcomed us. Um, you know, we, uh, one of our, um, uh, our, our manager chefs just came to us and he said it was probably one of the toughest conversations he's had with us because he got a great opportunity. And right after having a baby and all these other things that was going on in his life, like his life has changed so much in the last year, it's crazy. And he came to us and he's like, hey, I, I need to sit down and talk to you guys. And we're like, okay, what's going on? And at first I was like, oh, this is not gonna be so great because we're just getting ready to leave and do some things. But I'm like, congratulations. I mean, uh, really, I, we flipped the script and we just said, this is awesome for you. This is a great opportunity. And he's like, but I don't wanna leave. I'm like, well, tell me what that looks like. You know, what can we do to that? And he's like, well, I still would like to be behind the scenes. I still, he goes, I felt like I've put so much into this and how much I can do this. How can we do it? So it was 
the change in me, I feel like the change in us, I think, I think you've been more aligned with that for quite some time, but the change in me was basically knowing that everything's gonna be okay. It, it, people are here in our life for a change of season or a season or how long that might be. And we're privileged. I think it's like life in itself. Like because somebody dies, we're sad because we probably won't see them again. But the other part of it is like, well, how many years did I have with that person? How many good times did I have with that person? And I wouldn't give that back. You know, that, that's, that was, that was priceless. So you have to look at that as employees, as, as employers, that if somebody treated you super good and they have a greater opportunity to go somewhere or they have a different opportunity or it fits their lifestyle a little bit better, you can't be too upset with them about it. This is their life. You know, this is a job. This is a home career. This is a, your work, your work family, but it doesn't mean it's forever. So nothing's forever. It seems like, you know, I mean, there, there's some end to something at some time. So, well, and change equals growth usually. Yes. usually. And if we're harboring this, like, and encouraging this growth mindset, we want them to have the courage to go try things. We really do. Those are the people that we want to be around and work with. Yeah, well, I can tell you that one thing that's really nice is that uh, even we give training, we tell them that, hey, if we're going to put all this time and investment and train you, we definitely want some commitment for you. And we are paying for your training. So we'd like to see a year or two of you, like our CDLs or EMT2s yes, yes. or 3s. We do require some things because we don't charge those people to do those classes. Yeah, it's... And, and, and that's another thing that we give is we give education here. And part of the education we give is we'd like some return on our investments. But listen, if somebody wants to leave and like I said, they don't want to be here, then we're okay with that. We'll, we'll let them go. I mean, it, it, we're, we're not, we're not, a, um, we're not a, uh, a, a place that has walls that you can't leave. You know? Well, and it's really, it's about this, like, we don't want to hold on to negativity no. and harbor this like attitude or it's almost kind of can put you into a victim mindset. Like they're doing this to me. I can't believe it. And really, that's never where we want to be. No. We're here to be examples and to, to lead the collective and to yeah. have the lifestyle that we want to have. And behaving in any other way than we do is the opposite of what we want. Well, we want what we have for other people also. So yeah. If they want it, It's yeah. mirroring it. Yeah, it's, it's mirroring it and letting them know that they have a possibility because we didn't give it all given to us. I mean, we, we earned it. We worked for it. We mm -hmm. did it. We put the time and uh, the time and uh, effort into it. So if they are willing to, as we are doing now, we want to show people an easier path. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> so for those of you who joined so us today, <laughs> my, my voice is a little gone, but hopefully they're going to turn the mic up on us. And if it sounds quiet and we're just hoping that you, take a minute and decide what does safety look like for your organization? How does that play a role into the culture that you're building that is, a, that is either adding to your retention line for team members or subtracting away from that retention? And uh, we would love it if you would go to Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, like our page, just comment, share some questions with us. And uh, Charlie, got anything else to add? Yeah, you know, one more thing to that is just... Um, this is just not for employers, but this is for employees too. And how can you change the culture? And how can you be part of changing that culture in your company yeah. too? You know, maybe having that talk with your supervisors or managers. If you see something that doesn't seem right, see something, say something. You know, absolutely. And do it in a positive manner where they feel that you're not attacking them, but you want to see the culture help change. And I think that will help them also. That's a great, great perspective. All right. Well, well, Next we were time. employees at one time too, yes. so we like the best also. So thank you guys. Uh, leave comments, share, please. If you like these yes, things, share. share them out. We'd like to get more people to see them. Thanks guys. Okay. Bye. Thanks again for joining us on the Raise Up podcast. You can find us at raiseupmindset.com. Our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from Instagram, Facebook, our shorts. You can download the podcast straight from the website. If you're listening on another platform, please like, subscribe, share. We're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you wanna dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast. 
click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again. Bye-bye.